So my wife and I and daughter are scrambling to figure out what it is we're gonna take. So cash, laptop, couple things to close, really fast, insurance binder, state planning stuff, and out. Wife, she grabs some of her jewelry. That was it. <laughs> daughter, stuffed animals and gymnastics medals. Everyone's got, and son, he's out at swimming. Different perspective. What would you do if it happened at your house? How about a tornado, hurricane, flood, like the floods uh, recently this year? How about an earthquake? Here's the earthquake in China just, just before the Beijing Olympics. What if Walmart, Costco, Home Depot, Best Buy, any of the big guys are your biggest customer and they drop you tomorrow to go buy from China? What happens then? I have a friend of mine, EO guy, 90% of his business is with two customers. What happens if one of them were to go away? What do you think his answer was? Time off. Done. Finished. What are you doing about it? Nothing yet. What's your plan for it? I don't have a plan. I'm really screwed if it happens. Google makes you obsolete overnight. How about the mad cow disease problem? Does that going to affect your business? How about the sick cow that happened in California? Company goes into bankruptcy right after that. How about the lettuce? Again in California, the guys in my YPO chapter, all the lettuce recall, they had out all the disease in the lettuce recently. This was a year ago, probably remember that. I see a few nodding your head. What do you do in your business? How about the PR campaign that gets associated with that? How about the, the guys in China, they had lead in the toothpaste. Then the CEO commits suicide. A real problem for the company. How about the tainted milk issue in China going on right now and the tainted candies? And just a couple of weeks ago, here's the Herald Tribune when I was traveling in Singapore. China confiscates tons of tainted feed. What kind of shape is that company in right now? What are they doing to plan for that kind of issue? How about the largest bank failure in U.S. history until this one? And then Bear, Lehman, Merrill, Countrywide. This guy in my forum, really good guy. He's in the nursery business. Well, what happens to him if there's a drought or a frost? Or how about the 700 undocumented workers that work in the fields in California for his company, not to mention the thousands and thousands and thousands or millions that are currently living there working in California. What happens to him? So I asked him, what happens to your business if the immigration laws suddenly change? What's your plan? <coughs> Dude, I'm out of business. Well, shouldn't you be thinking about what you would do if that happens because new administration, anything's possible. How about Starbucks? Anybody ever had a cup of coffee there? I know this is Dunkin' Donut Town. <laughs> Don't make fun of me, Vinny. We went to Dunkin' Donuts today and I ordered a grande something and Vinny's <laughs> looking at me saying, this is Dunkin' Donuts, it's small, medium, or large. <laughs> so, a little embarrassing. So anyway, Starbucks, are they cool? Or are they commodity? Or are they not, sh are they not sure? What about your business model right now? Did you used to be cool? Are you now a commodity? Starbucks comes in with the breakfast sandwiches. So what was the problem with the breakfast sandwiches? People would walk in and go, it smells like Egg McMuffin in here. I like coming into Starbucks when it smelled like coffee. So what does Starbucks do? As they're trying to figure out their coolness, they pull them out. What are they doing now? They're retesting them again in some stores. Starbucks can't figure out who they are today. There was a time they were opening store after store after store. Now they can't close them fast enough. Real issue. Is that happening in your business? 
And if it is, what are you doing to get ahead of that curve? So let me share with you, I got just a few minutes left, leading in turbulent times. There are turbulent times out here. I'm going to rapid fire my 25 tips for leading in turbulent times. Here we go. First one, communicate regular, regularly with your team. When stuff is going on and people are freaking out, you got to talk to them about what's going on in their business. Communicate with them. Communicate with them regularly. If you let somebody go, do they think they're next? Are you sharing with them the vision? When we went through our battles and our very tough times, I was up in front of the company regularly sharing with employees what it is that we would do. Take time as a CEO to step back and think about your business. What ought I be doing? Am I doing the right thing? Do I have the right business model? If you need to cut, cut early and cut deep. We just had this debate in our forum group the other day. Guy with a $200 million tech firm in our group says, I need to cut out some people. In the first quarter, I'm not going to need them. I think I may need them in the second or third quarter and the cost of rehiring them back, hmm, I'm not sure. My experience, hey, go early, go deep, and however deep you think you got to go, go deeper. In tough times, you can always hire people back down the road and you'd be surprised how people will step up and do the job of others when you do it. But if you got to take the arm off, don't take one finger at a time. People will be too panicked in the organization. Stay close to your key relationships. We talked about that earlier. A buddy of mine, a really good buddy of mine, said I could share this story. He's technically insolvent, his business right now. He's got unbelievable amounts of credit card debt. He's got a million in personal debt on his balance sheet right now. He personally is insolvent. He's got a really tight relationship with his banker that he stayed really, really, really close. And in October, in the middle of the financial crisis, he got his credit line raised from three to four million. Stay close to your key relationships. Cash is not cash until it's cash. Accounts receivable aren't cash. We talked already about profit not being cash. If you gotta trim the fat in your organization, trim it. Incentivize your team to do more with less. I told my team at one time that they needed to cut big time in my organization. So they went and tried to make an attempt. They came back with virtually nothing. We need everybody that we have. I'll give you 10% of everything that you cut. They cut $2 million. <laughs> I like that return on investment. It's amazing how many people could step up and do the jobs of others. Use technology to help you out in your business. Negotiate better pricing. Be Walmart. Walmart's always grinding down everybody. Who is it that you, what are, who are your vendors that you can grind down and get better deal or better terms? Measure everything in your organization, especially in the tough times. And watch your key indicators. What are the top five metrics in your business that you ought to be watching every single day? And you get a daily report on your desk every single day with the key numbers. And for some firms, it might only be one number. It might be two numbers. And are you getting a monthly report of all your key indicators in your firm every month? Eliminate your unproductive people. At Platinum, 25%, the bottom 25% of our sales force accounted for what percent of sales? Any guesses? 3.6. So we wish them well. Invest in training. During tough times, many people cut back. Now's the time to invest. Train the people that you have so you can maximize their output, maximize their potential. Sell more to existing customers. So many of us are out there trying to get new customers right now when we could just sell more of our stuff to the ones that we have. And if you gotta get new customers, Offer your team big incentives now for new relationships.